say that on the, did I just say that on the screen? No, you didn't. I made sure. Okay. But anyway, welcome to the twenty fifth episode of Burning Subjects. We have the usual cast today, sort of. Well, we have Jim, Stephen, but in a little bit, we're going to be ha- having a debut for a, a new guest. But, uh... Yes. Spoiler alerts. It's a girl. Yeah. But, for now, and since these guys have been waiting all week for me to actually, you know, give the subject of this... This subject today is actually about us. What do we do? What do we want to do on railroad preservation? What do we want oh, to... Oh, god damn it. What? I actually kind of hate you for this one. Why? Let me let me already uh, get myself out of the way. I actually volunteered at the, my local steam museum. It only lasted about a month because due to my high functioning autism, they couldn't provide me the necessary guidance that I needed. In fact, that was a little bit more of a liability. So they said. Uh, maybe it's best if you don't uh, volunteer with us anymore. Jim, don't worry. I have been through the same situation as you, and I'll go through that later. Actually, though. But this this live stream actually won't just be about what we've been through, but rather what we're, we want to do. Like, do we want... Steven, shut Why? up. Why? Fuck you, Jim. You're <laughs> funny. <laughs> Why are you guys screaming your fucking microphone? <laughs> Let alone in the middle of the night. But anyway, what were you saying, Andrew? Either way, we're going to be talking about stuff that either we want to do in the preservation era or have done, like, I don't know, we want to restore steam locomotive or we want to repair a, uh, a length of trackage or we want to help other railroad societies or we want to help raise funds for a city to move a locomotive to a better place or. Or just straight up volunteer at another, you know, restoration group. Or, of course, start our own restoration project. <laughs> Which uh, most of us are going to talk about in a little bit. But for now, while we late, wait, uh, let me take a look at this screen. Um, I'm going to be doing this a little bit more often because I noticed that in the stream, there's actual viewers here. So... Whatever is in the live chat, I will read occasionally and uh, see what you guys think. Because this first up, Simba is here. Yeah, uh, Simba just says hello. I guarantee you, Michael's gonna be in this uh, in this live chat. He's gonna say, "Can you tell Andrew to give me another chance to behave because I learned my lesson and I want to be back in the cylinder box and burning subjects, hurdy dirty dur." Michael, in case you're watching, fuck off. Yeah. You're dead to us. But, besides that, ha- while we wait, have you guys ever tried to pronounce the last name of the the CEO of YouTube? No. Look up the last fuck name her. of this. Fuck her. Well, first off, yeah, fuck Susan. Even if you're somehow this bitch is watching. Fuck you. Try pronouncing Susan's last name. Well, well apparently, Mr. Wazowski. Apparently, uh, Mr. Akrazy, Mr. Akrazy pronounces it Wojcicki. Hmm. Okay, so, um, Susan Wojcicki, what, we, what, Wojcicki, Susan Wazowski, Wojcicki, what, we, Wajki chi Wajki Woo We Woke Witch of the West Oh my god Steven I actually wasn't expecting <laughs> Susan Wicked Witch of the Re- Okay um Susan uh, uh, pronounced uh Wichist uh, Susan we- you know what's really you know what's really embarrassing is that my mom's name is also Susan. Do you know what's even more embarrassing? 
What? Susan has a YouTube channel on her own website that has only 100,000 subscribers, and every video has at least 2,000 dislikes. Uh, like, do the dislikes actually out? Grow the, like. the likes uh, indefinitely. Like on one video, uh, he had she had two hundred likes and one thousand seven hundred dislikes. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> do, do, do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor and subscribe to Tom Wilson instead. You how, know who Tom Wilson is, right? Well, how about instead of uh, even thinking about Susan, what we says, what she. she, she we Wajki Susan Wood Susan Wachitsky. Weed Coo Weed Coochie Weed We Wajki Major Point Major Point Just subscribe to Tom Wilson on YouTube. Yeah, well Susan Wookie, let's say. Let's say that instead. Um but either way Instead of I should, the, I should be the one to uh, tell you I should be the one to tell you guys to show up and I beat the fucking dead iron horse about thirty two minutes before. How about, you see this face, this face right here? You see this at the stream? Hmm? Yeah, Look at that. Susan Wojcicki. Look at that face. Look at that face and tell me that she is a good person. She's not. That smile literally is the same smile that someone in pain would give. It's like a, it's like a Mike, it's like a Mark Zuckerberg smile. You know, it's very... Fake, very fake, and what the? That's a mole. I am, so, I am so, I am so sorry. I am so sorry, mother. I am so sorry, mother, that we have to be mentioning your name as well. Oh, um, to your mother, we're talking about a different Susan. Uh, we're talking about uh the CEO of YouTube, who is an absolute filthy fat. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, either way, uh, let's just. Hmm. I guess. Um, but again, I have to say this again. Subscribe to Tom Wilson. I was mainly asking Andrew if he if he knows who the fuck Tom Wilson is. Yeah, I don't know who he is. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll give you a hint. Uh, butthead. Is he the voice? Davis and butthead. <laughs> no, you dick, dick. <laughs> or no, you butthead. Butthead. <laughs> I am the great Cornelio. That's your hint. I'm the great Cornelio. That's your hint, you butthead. <laughs> one, one hint. <laughs> okay. um, I literally gave you a hint by saying you butthead. Uh... I don't get it. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know who the fuck Tom Wilson is. I don't know. Oh, for fuck's sake, he's Biff Tannen from Back to the Future. Well, that explains why I don't know who he is, because I, uh... I haven't watched the Back to the Future movies. Me neither. And the only reason that they are brought up frequently is with me is because of some overrated ten-wheeler! Yeah, some piece of junk that should have actually, uh... Then in hindsight, should have actually been blown up in real life. Okay, Maybe that's, that's hey, too much, but whatever. That's a little bit harsh, Jim. But hey, at least I'm an actual Back to the Future fan, like an actual fan of the movies. Well, and I think that number three is overrated as fuck. Well, yeah, I condemn, we, I, I condemn anyone who hasn't seen those movies. Those, but, those are those are classics. I mean, number well, three as a locomotive you is... You, can, hmm? you just, just fucking, you know, they're on Netflix if you want to watch them. I mean, number three oh, as... Number three so as a locomotive... Number three Andrew, as... What did you want to say? Number three as a locomotive, you know, just as an excursion star, is good. But people milk it too much. That's the problem, People. People praise it too much because. Seven sixty-five, twelve twenty-five, forty-four forty-nine. No, no, no. Actually, actually, All for those engines are good excursion stars, except those stupid asshole retard foamers just milk the fuck out of it and fucking just just fucking talk about it. Oh, have you seen this engine?
It's so cool. And it, it becomes their favorite goddamn page and it fucking drives me up the fucking wall. And they just keep fucking doing that shit. I don't understand what is their deal with the goddamn shit that they do. Why do they do that? Why do they have to fucking milk the goddamn uh, overrated team engines up? Even as a fucking fan of the 611, as a person who's seen 611 and twice, why the fuck do you have to milk it to death? Oh my fucking god. Like, and then they fucking just keep, like, talking about it. I don't understand their, their deal. I'm like, well, nobody gives a fuck about 578 for being the first steam engine from the NW to operate in preservation. But no, everybody's going to give a shit about 611 and 1218 and 475 and all that fucking shit because they still fucking operate a 1218. That's the last two six six four ever. And nobody gives a fuck about Skookum or, or fucking, like, the, you know. <laughs> I, I'm trying to fucking talk here. Uh, fucking goddamn uh, fucking these people. These fucking boomers. <sighs> Steven, take a moment to calm down. Calm down a little bit. <laughs> Breathe. I, I literally had to mute you, Steven. I had to mute you. Um, Calm down. All right, I'm going to unmute you now. All right. kind of ru- you, you literally ruined my big rant. You ruined my big Steven, rant. Steven, you're actually so loud, my mother could hear you uh, from downstairs. Oh, my God. Tell her to get some noise-canceling headphones, then. <laughs> what if I told you that that's not possible due to, the, due to the fact that my parents were watching TV? Oh my god. Then, put, then why don't you put some headphones in? But, but, don't have any handy on me right now. Look, but look, 765 in ex- is get, another... Uh, hmm? get bitched at by some people. 765 is another exception because that thing is a great excursion star. But as he said, they milk it too much. Like, they talk about it. Like, yes, it's a great excursion star. And it's great through and through. The people who run it, the locomotive itself, the history, the fact it was restored outside. But as I was trying to, but as I was trying to say, the foamers, they fucking milk it, and it drives me up the goddamn wall. I mean, take instances like what's a terrible locomotive that people foam over? Ah, uh, yes, thirty-two fifty-four. But then again, I, what, what, is, what is good about that? What, what, what name what, one thing that is good about the locomotive? Whistle and looks. That's it. That's it. I mean, why the fuck? Why the fuck do people? Why, why the fuck are there so many people that defend that locomotive in the cylinder cocks, saying that twelve seventy eight is just another locomotive? They don't have any attraction to twelve seventy eight. But look, but here's uh, here's something that actually could have changed thirty two fifty four. Like, imagine if new frame. Oh well, that's part of it. But imagine. Well, it's not really the 3254 itself that's bad. It's the people who restored it that are bad. The Gettysburg, of course. They didn't even the Gettysburg. Who restored it originally? It's the idiots at Canadian National. Yeah. Originally, you know, bringing it back to service in revenue service. I think I know what locomotive. I think, think basically, I know what locomotive was in a head-on collision with 3254. Out of all the locomotives... It, it was a Great Northern, uh, it, it might have been, supposedly, a Great Northern 462, number 1351. 1350, pretty, pretty close to a certain other Pacific. Hold on, I don't really, uh, who cares? This is the locomotive that could have fucking, you know, been in the head-on collision, from what I've heard in conversations in the cylinder cock server. Uh, let me see. It's in, it's in the burning subjects chat. Okay, but where is the where is the latest uh where is our new member? Is he she here? She's still she listening to Spotify. Later. She'll be here later. Oh, she'll be here later. Well, then I guess yeah, we'll just uh, oh, 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 assignments. Uh, wow, this episode's already went off the rails. Well, Stephen, how about you start off with uh, how you want to change the preservation era or what you want to do in the preservation era? 
basically, I'm probably going to have the longest discussion here because, well, I want to make Steam Excursions great again. Because in, honest, because in all honesty, Steam Excursions, ever since the 90s, the quality of Steam Excursions has slowly began to diminish. And, you know, like, I think it might have something to do with the whole Gettysburg boiler explosion. And, you know, everything being all strict and all that stuff these days. You know, a lot of Steam Excursion stars are being taken out of service for many, many years. In fact, you know, because of these, ins I mean, of course, I understand why they put these inspections in here. But, you know, I feel like, you know, the 1472 day inspections were the fall of so many steam stars because of the fact that they were required. They couldn't afford to do a full on rebuild on them like some some of these tourist railroads. So they just left them outside or something like that or just disassembled them and just never even you know, considered a rebuild of them ever again, you know? And they, I don't know. But, like, back in the 60s and 70s, Steam Excursions were fucking awesome. I mean, really. It's because it was the, the start of the new era, wasn't it? It was, yes. I mean, we, I mean... Steam engines, of course, they still get to operate on the main line, but it's very, very rare. And if anything, probably only just the fucking, like, the fucking UP steam excursions, which are very, very rare nowadays. I mean, really. I mean, in the, in the 60s, I mean, there was, like, the High Iron Company, and uh, what else was there? I mean, there was, like, the Southern Steam Program, and... Uh, I'm not so sure where else there were. You know, the the Norfolk Southern Steam but, Program, obviously. Um, oh, yeah, and I forgot but, to mention, San, the Santa Fe Railroad's Employee Appreciation Day. Fucking, and, you know, they were given a lot of freedom. Insurance costs weren't too high, you know, Operating a local one, it wasn't too expensive. I mean, you know, they, they did their, they were able to, you know, they, they had a lot of freedom, you know, and a lot of these steam stars lasted for quite some time, you know, and the funny thing is most of these steam stars from the early days of preservation are not with us anymore, operationally at least. I mean, just goes to show how, you know, I mean, how great steam excursions were back then. There used to be a lot more steam engines running back then. But nowadays, it's just confined to, like, a few select engines on, you know, on tourist lines. And they're just forced, they're, they're inevitably forced to, to basically, you know, go at a very staggeringly slow speed. 3415 is a um, is the epitome of that. Yeah. Can I talk about 3415? Yeah. Just just a few sayings about it. So 3415 is a four is a four six two Pacific from the Santa Fe, which actually is currently the only steam locomotive in the world operating with a uh, box puck drive wheels. And well, that thing. <laughs> Universal disc, uh, disc driving yeah, wheels. Unif yeah, whatever. Universal disc driving wheels. But here's the thing. Locomotives that were designed to go over 90 miles per hour deserve at least 45 miles an hour to, you know, cruise at. But no, the 3415, because of their track quality, is stuck at 15 miles an hour. With those huge... Ass slow. Fucking... Ridiculous! Crazy. Disgraceful. Although, I guess it's better than nothing, but considering the fact that it's pretty unique for a Pacific that's operating in preservation, I'll admit. But you know, it would just be nice if you know they could improve the track quality in some way, so that they could make the engine go like maybe thirty to forty miles an hour. You know what would be a good idea? What if the Grand Canyon Scenic Railroad traded the Lake Superior Ishming Twenty Nine? For thirty four fifteen, 
because then 3415 would be able to stretch your legs and 29 wouldn't need to, you know, wear out so badly. That could work. That actually could work, theoretically. Theoretically, yes. But, you know, I mean, another example, like, that, that's another thing. Like, steam excursions used to be speedy, you know, at least, you know, when it comes to, you know, the mainline excursions. They used to just fly down the tracks at, like, probably 70 miles an hour at the most. Probably even 80. But, you know, I mean, and, you know, I feel like the 70s and 80s was, those were, that was basically the renaissance of steam excursions. Like, we had so many steam engines operating, and, you know, they were able to, you know, do their thing, basically. I don't know what to say about that, but, you know. They were able to run free, like frolicking animals. At some point in the 90s, there was this big change. And like I said before, it might have had something to do with the Gettysburg boiler explosion of 1278. And maybe partially, you know, due to the fact that, you know... The Norfolk Southern closed their steam program in 1984. And, you know, I noticed that the steam excursions, I mean, there were a few good steam excursions that were still being done in the United States well into the 2000s. Like, I mean, there was still Rail Fair 99, which was probably the last, one of the last great, you know, bursts of, you know, you know, steam excursion-ish stuff in the United States. And wouldn't you know, at 2467, one of the locomotives that operated during that time doesn't operate with us anymore. Although I hear that the lease at the California State Railroad Museum was supposed to expire, you know, um, it's a real shame it only operated for a few years. I mean, really. But, um... You know, so many, I mean, I mean, there was uh, the Ohio Central was a great, you know, excursion company at one point. I mean, until, you know, Jacobson needed a place to store all his engines. So he, you know, built the Age of Steam Roundhouse and he ended up having to sell, you know, the whatever, the Ohio Central in order to gain enough money to build the Roundhouse. But, uh, honestly... I mean, I think that's sort of a fair trade because, yes, having the railroad will be plenty of space to run your locomotives freely. But the thing is, you can't run your locomotives freely without a good place to take care of them. So either you run your locomotives freely, but you can't take care of them, or you have a place to take care of them, but you can barely run them. Which one in the preservation era? When it comes to preserving what's left of these locomotives dearly, the shed would be the most likely to go for. And then most likely with the money that you make off of the exhibits, most likely, if maybe, you could buy the railroad again. And then you could start running excursions again. It's just such a, sh- it's just such a damn shame that steam excursions are just kind of dying now. I mean, even and even like when, you know, and just brought back their steam program. It was only for like probably not even half a decade. But I'm not so sure why they only brought it back for that long. But I guess it's better than nothing. But I feel like, you know, I mean, it would still give, you know, other steam excursion stars a chance to shine on their trackage, you know? <sighs> But slowly, you know, like, and not to mention, um, you know how, and not to mention, like Amtrak, like their little anti-steam policy bullshit that they enforce, because apparently steam trains, steam excursions can't run not under their insurance policy now. I don't, I don't know what the deal is with that. Amtrak sucks. Amtrak sucks. Amtrak sucks. Amtrak sucks. It basically just caused you know six eleven to not be able to operate on the main line. Unless it's for a ferry or something like that. Oh my goodness! But uh, they should really at least uh, the people that honestly controversial opinion, but I honestly think that the North Carolina Transportation Museum should just acquire Six Eleven. But uh, 
Steven, now that you've explained what you want to do, how are you going to do it? Well, actually, that's not all of that I want to do for preservation. But, you know, I want to be able to make – I basically want to take steam excursions back to their roots, you know. Like, basically, do, do excursions that were similar to, you know, the old ones. But how about you explain to these folks the locomotive you want to restore? The locomotive I want to restore is a – Former Norfolk and Western um, M class 480 Mastodon type locomotive that is uh, on a park in my hometown. The locomotive is numbered 433. Now, the engine was built by the American Locomotive Company at their Richmond Works, which was originally the, just the Richmond Locomotive Works. In January of 1907, it was um, the, I don't know, it was basically just, you know, assigned to freight duties and all that stuff as a, basically a, you know, replace, uh, as, you know, basically an alternate, you know, they were NNW's press, uh, they prefer, the NNW preferred 480s because they had more adhesive weight, which meant more weight pushing down on the drivers and, you know, more attractive effort. Sometime, sometime in the you know 30s or 40s or whatever the fuck, um, the um, M classes were uh, just reduced to being operated on branch lines and shunting and all that stuff. When the larger locomotives, which will do very little in preservation in comparison to 433, like the F, uh, like the K class mountain types, which did nothing in preservation. Uh, the J class um, Northerns and the uh, Y class Malays uh, of all sorts. Um, they were basically, you know, doing all the mainline work. Um, also, the class A's, um, fucking, you know. And 433, I believe, operated. You know, it was basically transferred to the city of Bristol. Basically, transferred to the town of Bristol, Virginia, where it was, you know, used as basically a yard switcher. Partially because the locomotive wasn't even superheated. But the engine... Yeah, I to add superheaters into that thing, then. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. That's actually... And, you know, Steven, that might be a problem. The... the, uh, the um, um, actually, there were other... Lo there were some M classes that were superheated. Oh. But, you know... But... Uh, but how are you going to convert this one to be superheated if the locomotive itself currently isn't? I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know quite yet. But, you know, I'm still trying to find out, you know, all the mechanics and shit, how a steam locomotive works and how to, like, install new parts on a locomotive that, you know, I don't know. But, you know, I, but, you know the engine was retired in, like, the 50s when the diesels took its job. And so, you know, the engine was donated to the city of Abingdon, Virginia, where it was put on display in a park, like right near the old Abingdon branch. And, you know, and it's been basically rotting there since. Despite a cosmetic restoration, it is still rotting there. But, you know, basically what I want to do with the locomotive is move it to a museum I plan to found. And um, I want to basically do a lot of, you know, ref like ref put a lot of refinements on the locomotive. What I want to do is, first off, I want to give it a tender that was off of a Y3 class Malay, apparently. Um, that's apparently at the BMT. But, you know... That's one change I want to do because it has a larger capacity than its current tender. And it looks more suited for a mainline locomotive or a mainline excursion engine. And, well, I want to convert the locomotive to burn oil, oil. somehow. Or, hell, maybe even waste vegetable oil, like what the Grand Canyon Railway does. as Because it's, I guess, somewhat of a renewable resource because you know you know the, all like you know the, all the uh, oils being you know 
you know, made by the vegetables and all that stuff. We're planting vegetables, uh, you know, harvesting their oil, you know, it's basically renewable resources, you know, all that. And, and um, what I also want to do to it is put lower bearings or spherical bearings on the axis. Either one. I haven't really decided on which one I want to do with it yet. But that will, you know, allow it to, you know, not be, it will re reduce the chances of hot axle bearing. You know, and um, also, what I, what I also want to do with it is uh, add a Lentor ejector type funnel, which is what the, also what the Grand Canyon Railway does. And from what I've heard, it actually helps conserve fuel somehow. I'm, I don't know. That's what all so, in other words, in British English, the Lamentair blast pipe. Basically, yes. Uh, what other refinements? Um, like a. Uh, oh, yeah. The, if it doesn't already have one, like uh, basically a bearing temperature gauge, whatever the fuck it's called, and like some sort of like automatic lubricator that will lubricate the rods while the engine is running. I think 1522 had a similar device on it when it was restored to operation. Um, that's one thing I want to put on it. Um, I also wonder if buttonhead staples would be a good refinement to put into the locomotive. I think they were the, uh, the same type of staples that were used on the, the, the G5 Pacifics from the Canadian Pacific. I wonder how I would integrate that into an M-Class firebox, <clears throat> let alone the oil fire aspect, but... Because, you know, the shotgun firebox that literally fills up like no, 25% no, of the no, gap. No shit. But at least I know that it can theoretically be done. Like an oil fire, I mean, an oil fired shotgun firebox locomotive can be done because I think that um, a 260 mogul from the Colorado and Southern actually was oil fired and, you know, it, you had a shotgun firebox that operated on the Georgetown loop or something <clears> like that. Um, but I mean, those are a few of the refinements I want to put on the locomotive to make it last longer. Um, just a few, just the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but, uh, cosmetically, because here comes the good part. Out, hear me out. I have always thought that the M classes in their original N and W paint scheme are really plain looking, really fucking plain looking. Uh, yes, they're freight engines, but you know, as an excursion locomotive, you know, I think that it should be kind of you know decked out, you know, for you know the special little thing, you know, that it does every once in a while. And you know, maybe it will, you know, let people know that the train is coming. On the grade crossings, you know, or whatever. But basically, let me see if I can get a picture of it. Probably on the flash drive or something like that. Where the fuck is it? So basically, he's going to paint it up with black, paint it up nice dark black with a gray smoke box, white trimming. What else? No, oh, yeah. No, no. Okay, let me, let me put a picture in the burning subjects chat. Basically, it's going to be painted all shiny black with um, brass boiler bands along the, I guess, the boiler or whatever. A gray. Um, you know, a, and. Um, a white and gray smoke box, uh, a centered headlight. No, it's still metallic silver smoke box, like oh. metallic silver. And, you know, white walls. Like, you know, trim around the cylinders, you know, um, you know, I wonder, um, let me see here. I'm probably, I'm probably also going to put the pilot shield and the spark arrestor on there just for looks. Uh, the bell's going to be mounted on the front, like, you know, on the top of the smoke box door, I guess. Um, it's going to have a centered headlight, which is visored. Um, and it's going to have a brass eagle on top. And I think I'm going to actually also change the way that the grab iron on the front of the smoke box is to a little bit more of a conventional placement. Um, and um, let me see. It's got a red cab roof. Um, and on the cab, it says Southwest Virginia instead of, you know, 
it's regular instead of like you know like the engine number or whatever and the engine number is on the tender uh just big you know 433 on the tender and you know there's also a switcher type pilot on the back of the tender um but uh and the whistles or the whistles that i plan to put on the locomotive are uh, they consist of the primary whistle i'm planning on a uh cock long bell three chime basically you know what a lot of the basically a very i don't know how to describe it but you probably know what i'm talking about the you, secondary you, chimes oh, for fuck's sakes yeah yeah those uh engines fuck um and the fucking uh for the secondary whistle i plan to use um a red and six chime as Oh, because well, why not? A low pitch whistle and a high pitch whistle, you know, just to just to kind of have like two different voices. Because why the hell not? And for emergency purposes, when there's foamers on the track, a tertiary whistle or horn, I should say, a Leslie A two hundred, you know, style air horn. An air horn. Yeah, for safety purposes. Okay. Better safe than sorry, am I right? You are really going out with this, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I don't even, like, it's not even going to be the same engine. It's basically going to, it's just going to be a different engine. People and, are going to. Uh, although this is, a, I, I think this is kind of stupid, but, you know, for some reason, as a tribute to young Simba from the first Lion King movie, I actually wanted to name the locomotive Little Simba. After all, it is not a very big locomotive, so, you know. But yeah, that's what uh, that's what Steven wants to do with in the preservation era for his likings. Restoring a mastodon, change the era of steam excursions forever. Make them great again. Make them last. Make steam excursions great again. Make that a hashtag, I, or I should say pound. No, pound makes steam excursions great again. Because, you know, I think that the, the hashtag symbol is also called pound. All right, but anyway, though, now on to Jim. I got nothing. You, wh- why don't you talk about the 4428? Uh, well, let's face it, that's never going to happen. Basically, like, that was a bit of an idea, or just a bit of a daydream I had, I guess. Basically, if I had the money and the time and the mechanical expertise and the space for it, I would try to build or heavily refurbish a German Class 44 locomotive, which is a big, chunky, three-cylinder, 210 decapod. And I would not raise 4428 for whatever reason because I wanted to give it an American number and, you know, I thought it kind of suited it or whatever. I like this way it sounded, but whatever. But I guess that nowadays in this new era of uh, mainline running, especially here in the Netherlands, it wouldn't be very practical because a Class 44 engine can only go like 50 miles an hour tops. And hey, an M-Class. an M-Class can go 50 miles an hour, and I plan to take that thing on fucking tours for God's sakes. Cross country. As I'm trying to say, in the Netherlands, even like local passenger trains can go as high as uh, 80. So, yeah, it's not particularly high. Like, like, like the fucking uh, regular passenger trains. Don't really care. So don't, so don't get all pissy at me because I was trying to say that the M-Class was 50, like the 44s. Everybody got that? But yeah, Jim wanted to. Is, nowadays, it will be it will be just it will be too slow to flow freely with regular passenger traffic. But yeah, that's the problem. That's what Jim wanted to do. He wanted to make a replica of one of these pretty thick decapods and uh, yeah, cosmetic. Not Greek slops. Huh? So to anybody who casually glances at any German steam engine and calls it a Greek slog, you uncultured swines. 
But anyway, um, actually, where is she? Um, she hold on. Where is who? The new guest oh. that's supposed to be oh, there. Yeah. I know. That scared me. <laughs> well, I guess while we wait, I have here something very special that I actually recently got back. This is my Broadway Limited imports, Reading T1. Is this it 2100? Obviously. And this one is in her Rambles livery. It's got a real anthracite coal in the tender. The entire body is made of die cast. It's got a, f a well, firebox. We're still, the, hmm? While we're still on the topic of uh, T1s, I must say right now, um, the I think that, you know, the, the, like, I guess the pilot, the way that they put the people on the pilot, it looks a little bit odd. Like this? Like right here? Yeah, the, like, like, I don't know, like, they make the whole, like, it has a, a kind of a switcher pilot, too, uh, don't they? Yeah, they're pretty, they're uh, freight locomotives, mainly. Fucking hell. But, yeah. Actually, I guess while we're on the top of the T ones, what are your what is your favorite guys? Well, what guys? What is your favorite steam locomotive? Damn it! I just finished talking about it. So your favorite locomotive is four thirty three. Yes. Your. Mm, well, mine of course, Reading T one and with one to one hundred. And Jim, what is your favorite steam locomotive? Oh, yeah, that's right. That depends. Well, let's say, um, what's your favorite locomotive that you've seen? Oh, that I've seen. I got, that's got to be that one particular class 52 locomotive, 3879. Well, now, what's your favorite locomotive in the world? 3985. Yes. Very yeah. Press, look, if there's anyone still at the stream, press F in the chat for Union Pacific 3985. Because, because they half-assed the rebuild, and they ended up having to retire it. Uh, grand, uh, By the way, can I also just, uh, can I also, speaking of foamers, uh, this is something that I also mentioned uh, way back in episode two, I think. There's this one idiot called Kevin Samala, who um who is, who seems to be over obsessed and infuriated with Union Pacific converting 4014 to burn oil without changing the without changing the engine's number. Why the fuck would they do that? I don't think there were any plans of changing the road numbers on the big boys if uh, if they were going to convert all of them to oil firing in the, in the steam era. I had 4005s. Um, Oil burning trial has been successful, so just shut the fuck up and uh, accept it. And even if you, uh, and if they, uh, I mean, they're not going to change the engine number up for you into something different because you know it'll be. Uh, I think it will be much more expensive than you may think. Not just the case of oh, just just get a paintbrush. No, I think that. There may actually be quite a bit of uh, paperwork uh, involved uh, with that and, and other things or whatnot. Not to mention probably casting a new number plate, which is a bit unnecessary. And, um, yeah, it's not like uh, it wouldn't make that much sense. And besides, if you think, if you're, uh, if he was opposite minded, like, uh, like they must keep it as a coal fired engine. There was no way in hell that they were going to do that. Oh, let's face it, it's not practical. So, yeah. Oh, Kevin, uh, so, Kevin can just uh, crawl back into the into the filthy pit of despair that he uh, that he dared to rise from. Probably, is, um, probably from his mother's uterus. I'm pretty sure it wasn't even that. Abortion. That's a hot take. 
Oh. Ugh. Or better yet, we can just the fucking decapitate him and throw his fucking skull in the body of fo- in the in the you know um, pit of foamers. Oh my god! <laughs> you had to mention that joke. <laughs> The dumpster of foamers. Yeah, for those who don't know, um, on Gary's Mod, we made a shed, you know, called the Five Five Time Shed, and in the back, there's a dumpster filled with what we like to call foamer heads. Basically, it, uh, foamers that piss us off. We, uh, we just put there. Uh, we basically just pretend like we, you know, killed them you know, and put our, them we killed them and put our heads in the dumpster. Including a certain pedophile with his, uh, Tommy Pink doll. Let's not yeah, talk about him anymore, please. <laughs> but, yeah, um, but wait, is she still coming on? I'm asking her if she's finished with her assignments now. <laughs> I may have to change over to the, to my mobile phone in a bit. Well, because I'm gonna let my computer reboot again. So since of, uh, I guess fixing uh, some things <laughs> or attempting to fix something. <sighs> I mean, since Jim got to talk about his favorite steam locomotive that he's seen in person, and uh, Stephen, you know, talking about his favorite locomotive that. You know, he's both seen in person, and, you know, he just likes the locomotive altogether. My favorite locomotive that I've seen in person has to be 2926. It just has to. Big chungas of northerns. Yes. The best thank, God, and thank God. And one thing, it's not a northern. It's a northern that is not milked to death by foamers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Unlike, unlike its, I unlike its cousin. Well, thirty-seven fifty-one, oldest preserved northern. Twenty-nine twenty-six is the most advanced preserved northern. Built in nineteen forty-four by the Baldwin Locomotive Works, and well, after retirement came after the locomotive only served the railroads for nine years. Well, nine years. I thought that six fourteen was the most. Uh... Well, six fourteen. Six fourteen may be the most. My ass. Well, advanced my ass. That thing burns coal. Coal burning steam locomotives aren't real steam locomotives. Ha ha! Make fun of Ross Roland right there. Well, but whatever. I mean, if you like, I mean, I, I still like the sense. I like. I'm in the sense that six fourteen was. As I was saying, as I was saying, I still like the scent, the, like the smell of coal burning. But factually, I was trying to say that. <laughs> 614 is more advanced because it was built in 1948 instead of 1944. Whatever, Andrew, you may continue. But yes, yes, Jim. 614 may have been built in 1948, but two things. One, it burns coal. Two, it actually has a lower tractive effort. And it actually can't go as many places as 26, which is actually even more crazy. So the difference is 2926... Ha, it, well, one, it burns oil. Two, it was actually official. It was actually recorded at a speed of 120 miles an hour in revenue service during the, during the war. So that's pretty nuts. And on top of that, with a coupled with the roller bearing rods and the very very rare extendable stack, which uh, 2926 is going to be the first steam locomotive in the preservation era to operate with an extending stack. So that's gonna be cool. Wait, they're actually gonna wait. They're actually gonna put the stack on there. Yep, I've actually used it myself. It's really cool. Well, thank God for that. That that is that is gonna be a treat. Yeah. Instead of having a short stump funnel, all because the tunnels only have enough room for the boiler. Doesn't have any room for you, buddy. On top of all that, because of the roller bearing rods, it actually. Has, is the first locomotive in the preservation era to also be fitted with PTC, which means positive train control. And actually, I actually looked in the stream earlier. This is kind of getting off topic, but I looked in the stream chat earlier, and I noticed that someone said, Andrew, why are you not in your tiny-ass car? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
This calls for some memes that I need to post. Uh, yeah. For those who Here's are uncultured. Hmm? Hmm. J Class 613 was built in 1950. Checkmate. Picture, not the fucking one that I've been <laughs> Anyway, memes. Here we Let's go. see. Here we go. You look at memes. I'm gonna post one. This is Andrew racing in a race from a game that he used to play in my childhood. Let me see. <sighs> For whatever uh. reason, it's taken longer than usual. I don't understand why. It's just fucking stuck there. But look, I'm gonna. I'm you know that meme that you've been using a lot lately with that face that's going like, oh no, and then the face going like, yay. I'm gonna try recreating both of those faces. What, you mean the Biff one? Yes. One moment. Okay, I did the first okay, one. There you go. It means you will see, uh, this is a game that I used to play when I was little called uh, Hot Wheels Beat That. I used to play that a lot when I was eight or nine years old. That was a... Uh, <sighs> I don't know why, but actually, I really enjoyed playing that, you know, game. But, you know, I just figured, you know what, why not throw him in the race? I'm yeah, in the P45 in the right here. I don't know. You're racing, like, like the cars in the game are literally, like, the size of Hobbiel's cars. You know, you're driving on, like, computer desks and all that stuff. And, like, on, like this, I don't know. Honestly, it sounds kind of fun. I can't really. But, uh, we have a limited... T Wait, where'd Jim go? Jim? I don't know where the fuck he went. He probably just went to get Lena. Lena, that's her name. I almost said Luna. Damn. This file is fucking giant as fuck. Whatever. See <sighs> what I can do to try to upload it because this is a uh, Windows XP background that I uh, put Andrew into. But yeah, about 2926. I take pride for working on that thing for two years. That's how I got my experience when it comes to railroading. In fact, on Discord, my profile is literally me standing in front of the 2926. <laughs> and the funny thing is, I also um, made a little meme of you in the 2926. Wait, what? I don't, I don't I remember. Made a, I made a meme of you, of you with the 2926. Don't you remember? Uh, I actually don't remember. Can you send it again? Hold on. Let me, let me actually try to uh, send the picture. Holy shit, that's... These fucking files are necessarily large, like... So they're gonna have to fucking... Should be right there in a few minutes. Okay. Let me just go down. Tiny call, mate! <laughs> uh, let me guess, you guys are still on the fucking, uh... Oh. We're just talking about the... We're just talking about the tiny car memes, and uh, a little bit of funny. Oh, <laughs> you looked in memes, didn't you? <laughs> Look at what Pokey posted in the memes of the cylinder. Wait, what? In memes? In <laughs> cylinder? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> God damn it, monkey. This. So basically, uh. <laughs> Monkey made a meme of, uh... This is one of the other memes that I made. Monkey made a meme of, uh, me. Andrew meets Andrew. Wait, what? Uh, let me see my meme. It's a picture of you and your class in front of 2926. It's a clone Oh, clone What? Get it? One second. Isn't the P45? on the Okay, that's a good joke. No, I thought that the clone was in the car. Look at also, that. So this is you in a, in a, also, this is Andrew in a Windows XP background. Where am I? <laughs> just on a deserted island, and then there's a boat just randomly just sailing by and just, just trying to get help from the boat or something. I don't fucking know. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm looking at the meme of... Like me and my class, and then the P forty five, and I can't. Ima I I'm imagining the P forty five just driving along the boiler jacketing of the. T <laughs> oh, 
You saw a drawing somebody made. What? A drawing? Yeah, just I don't know. I just <laughs> saw it and I thought, oh look, that could be like a weird cartoony it's version just like of, a, of me. I it's guess. just like him going like this. Yeah, he's wearing pants instead. <sighs> but uh, let's check the chat. Oh, we got There's four people pants. on the stream today. Um, let's see. Uh, Andrew is looking. One Michael is one of them. Michael. None of them are Michael. Oh, luckily, one of them is a Russian. Uh, oh, one of them is. A Wait, Russian that's guy. Monkey. Monkey has been watching the stream. Oh my god. Oh, all right, but let's Monkey, see here. You son of a bitch. Holy fucking shit. But uh, let's see what else here. Uh, look at these. What are we doing? What exactly are we doing with our law? I mean, I'm just waiting for uh, I, Lena to show up so that I can tell my what I'm doing. Which actually, after this, I'm gonna have to make a call with Lori, which is gonna be right here on the stream. And if you guys don't know, Lori is the is the woman who owns the locomotive that I'm gonna talk about that I'm working on. Seven sixty nine, dudes. <laughs> I had to do that. Yeah, of course you did. Well, a I'm lot of restart my PC. A lot of people make fun of the number of seven sixty nine, but I mean it's completely understandable though. Okay, otherwise it, it'll just be you know seven sixty nine. Yeah. Mm. Just mm. get it, Steve Rambo. Oh, oh, if oh. it ain't Bill Zed, it's got to be Steve. FDM on a gachi mochi for you. Let's see that. Also, uh, tragic announcement that I have to make here instead of on my own uh, channel. Probably because of GBC problems, I can't make uh, local profiling uh, for a while. Uh, fuck. Which sucks. Well, does it suck as much as being stranded in the middle of nowhere with a locomotive without fuel? Yes. And to throw in a not safe for uh, not safe for younger audiences joke. It sucks more than the amount than the amount of penises that Steve Rambo has sucked off. <gasps> I mean, luckily, this is not advertiser-friendly, so... Uh, what the heck? I look in memes, and I... subjects, not Baby Einstein. <laughs> look, in, look in memes. Look in memes on the Sonda Cox, and look at what he's done now. Oh my god, what, what is this? What is this? What is he done? You gotta look for me. <laughs> Yes, I've stole the P45 today. Now we're gonna take it on the open road and we're just gonna. Uh, oh, oh, not again. There's a pothole yeah, on the ground. I'm, I'm already calling it, uh, Stephen. You're the sting. Probably because of the hell. <laughs> the judges shut up for an hour. <laughs> um, no. No. I'm making audio. I'm making audio of me, like, um, in the P45. No, I, 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 no, I'm actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, hey, loud now. Hey, Lena's here. Oh, Lena. She's here. Also, uh, bad news. Due what? to the crappy microphone quality of her headset, she'll be muted. Oh. Well, Lena, welcome. So we won't hear her speak. Well, Lena, welcome to the stream. And, uh, I'm Andrew. But uh, first, before we go into my story, I'm going to make some quick audio of me in a P45 to edit. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, at- there's this meme floating around in my server, uh, Lena, where you remember Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear in the flipping uh, P45. P45 that he built? Okay. Uh, basically, um, somebody uh, decided to slap his Andrew Space. And for... Clarkson. And for and green it became the meme overnight here. And for green purp and I'm, for green I'm the, guy. I'm the guy who did it. I'm the guy who made the place. And for green screen purposes, yeah, I'm putting a pillow behind me. 
Yes, look at this. I've stolen the P45. No one can stop. Ah! Pothole in the ground. Pothole in the ground. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just continue driving. I've got it now, and I can give it to my mother. Ah! Not a gun. Yeah. You'll be forgiven for thinking that we are just a bunch of man children, Lena. Well, to be fair, Andrew still is a child. But I am quite a man child. I am quite a man child, but I'm not as much well, as let's, uh, us. Let's well. not go into the detailing about that. But anyway, now, the moment you've been waiting for <laughs> my story. So. I want to revive what is remaining of the Santa Fe Railroad. Yeah, just under Pika and Santa Fe. Hey. You're breaking up a bit badly. Uh, Not on my end. But either way, we all know the song, you know, Do you hear that whistle down the line? I, big, I figure that it's engine number six. 49 G is the only one that is on that way. The Etches in a big and Santa Fe. We all know that song. Yeah, engine number 49 was more. Engine number 49 was more than likely cut up for scrap if it actually existed. But the thing is, how about we replace 49 with, I figure that it's engine 769. Yep. <laughs> Course. What if we replace that? She is the only one that'll sound that way on the Atchison Santa Peak and Santa Fe. But either way, that rhymed, but the Santa Fe. Ra- <laughs> hmm? Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, Lena, he wants to refurbish that locomotive. He's already doing a pretty good job at it. But either way, and not just, you know, <laughs> making it look nice. He wants to. He wants to make that piece of machinery actually work. The thing, Fire it up. <laughs> the thing is, when it comes to the Atchison to begin Santa Fe, there's very little left of it. Yes, there's a couple of locomotives left. You know, 3751 is running and 2926 is up and almost running. But what about the actual rails? What about rolling stock? What about some of the older steam locomotives from the Santa Fe? What about some of the... Areas that are more unique to the Santa Fe. And, well, I live in New Mexico, the home of, of course, in which every Saturday I go over to Santa Fe to usually visit my dad. But uh, during the whole pandemic, I had a thought because when I was very young, like about six years old, my dad took me to a museum called the Old Coal Mine Museum, in which I got to see my very first steam locomotive. And that was 769 standing there idling not really moving but standing proud and silent got to run, walk on the running board a couple of times took photos and we left i didn't think that about eight years later i would come back to that same locomotive and try working on it because during the pan- the pandemic i i was bored out of my mind and so i asked dad hey do you want to go over to the old train again he said sure and well We spent about an hour and a half going to Madrid. And, well, once we went to the locomotive, we we just stared for about 30 minutes. And then I actually got a good look at how the condition of the locomotive was. And it was in surprisingly good condition. And so I got some WD-40 and started wiping it to get off dirt and a couple of grime. And, well, actually, one of the owners came up to me and said, hey, get off the locomotive. And I said, no, 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 no. This needs to be cared for, okay? If you guys aren't going to care for it, then I will. And then she said, all right, fine. Just just be careful. And then I went home that same night still wondering about that poor thing. And then the next morning, I called the owner of the locomotive and asked him, what are your plans with the thing? She said, oh, we're probably going to almost sell it to someone. And, well, I was heartbroken at that. And so I asked, well... How about instead, you turn it into your own attraction? We get a couple of volunteers, and we take care of her. And maybe we can get her running again. And, well, she was very open to the idea. And the next day, we got to work straight away. Took the cylinder caps off and uh, got a look inside, and she was in great condition. The dry climate had preserved her well. And now, 
with uh, most of our volunteers from the Cumbres and Toltec and, and the Durango and Silverton, and from the New Mexico Steam Locomotive and Historical Society, we are now currently working to get the 769 running again, as well as with heart with hard work and a lot of help helping ship from the Santa Fe Southern Scenic Railroad, which actually has recently got back on their feet thanks to George R. R. Martin, who is also very keen on the 769's behalf. But what is the history of 769? And why did we choose her of all locomotives in, in New Mexico, of all of the Santa Fe locomotives that could have given, been given a chance to run? Why 769? Well, I'll tell you. In 1900, 769 was built by the Richmond Locomotive Works in Richmond, Virginia. But keep in mind, this was before the Richmond had merged with the American Locomotive Company. So this was a sole Richmond design. Ten of them were made. Number 765, not to be confused with another, through 775. 769, of course, being the fifth one made. 769, along with her class, were made for hauling short-distance freight trains. And, well, they served their duties for about uh, 50 years, most of them. But uh, <clears throat> 769 was actually, and a couple of her lo brothers, were actually sold to the Colorado... S mining company, in which uh, the locomotive would actually be used as a switcher in a short-distance freight locomotive. And uh, another locomotive, which actually was preserved at the Colorado Mining Company, was 870, which most people would say is a sister locomotive. But actually, you couldn't have been more wrong. I'll get into that later, though. 769, along with uh, 772, were sent over there. Which, uh, as I said, the locomotives uh, provided freight service and shunting, which 769 was actually the only locomotive that actually got to regularly run on the main line, in which it actually had to bring water from Santa Fe to the mining company because the water that they had in, in Madrid was poor quality. And, well, sadly, though, there was a pretty tragic end to uh, the 769 and her, and her brothers. In 1956, the mining company would close due to bankruptcy. And of course, and well, before that, there was actually a very catastrophic fire fire from one of the buildings that stored most of the coal. And well, they had no choice but to close the place down and abandon the town as well, actually. Leaving the locomotives, the town, the mining company, the railroad, and its history behind. But in the 70s, a couple of explorers rediscovered the town, and the mine company, the mine company, which the main structure was actually still there at the time, was about to collapse. And the day that he left, the day he came back, it was gone. All the locomotives were still there. 769, 870, 874, and 772. 772 was sadly sold for scrap. 769 was pulled out of her shed, which she had actually been parked in when she was a... Uh, left abandoned. 870 was left outside to the to the elements in which she was very badly distraught. 770, 874 was also sold for scrap metal as well, sadly. But 870 was sent to Kansas and put on display with uh, 769's original headlight, might I note, with 769 being uh, cosmetically restored at uh, the, the old coal mine museum, as it was now called because Madrid had now been converted from a normal town to a heritage town, in which everything was rebuilt, refabricated, and put on display. But some things, Probably, you know... Um, hmm? Sorry if I butt in, but of course we're talking about the town of Madrid, Mexico, as opposed to the capital city of Spain. Yeah, New Mexico, Madrid. But the thing is... Yeah, well, uh, but, but, hmm? being a, but if it's a heritage town, a tourist town, that means that very few to no people actually live there anymore. Actually, most of the town, the houses that are actually there are up for sale. So you can actually live in Madrid. Oh, okay. It's pretty cool. Just curious. But carry on. But, uh, well, seven, well, 870 was sent off to Kansas and perfectly cosmetically restored. 769 wasn't as lucky. 769, well, pulled out of her shed and put on display was, uh, well, exposed to the elements in, ver in a very harsh way. 
Well, this well the shed that she was stored in was turned into a theater for the town to use regularly. The 769 was exposed to a flood-ridden zone in which every time it rained, the locomotive would be buried deeper and deeper and deeper. The locomotive had to be dug up five times within the span that has been on display until finally in 2010, they finally found a way to get rid of the flood, the flooding problems. However, still leaving 769 in the ground. Currently, she's about a foot in the ground with the drivers and pilot and the tender still on home rails but in poor condition. 769 also being cosmetically restored the wrong way, in which the locomotive was given incorrect paint, shall we say. In which, well, while she stood there, the paint began to dry to ship off, as well as the asbestos covering, which actually, the asbestos has also been in poor shape as well. But... Now, we are planning to move the 769 to a new home, which uh, currently she's outside her shed, obviously. So let's just say that her shed is like right here. What we're going to be doing is moving the locomotive backwards, rotating it, and turning it in between these two buildings that are right here. And we're going to build a temporary shed on top of it and do the restoration work there. That's plan A, though. Plan B, just in case that doesn't work and the locomotive is sold to the Santa Fe Southern, this, the locomotive will be restored inside a full-on workshop that the Santa Fe Southern is currently building, actually, which they actually built it for working on the cars and locomotives they have there. In this workshop, we could probably take care of 769 better. But for the time being, we're going to stick with plan A. And uh, on top of all that, Currently, we actually have estimated the cost of the restoration to be about $1.2 million, which, yes, for 280, that's pretty expensive. But then again, it's the last American Richmond locomotive left. It deserves to be taken care of dearly. The only other Richmond locomotive built solely by the Richmond is actually in Russia, number 293. But, uh, but yeah. Currently, we have a full. We have actually fully fabricated the boiler. Well, not really fabricated, but we've inspected the boiler from inside and out, and the locomotive's boiler actually looks in great condition, except for the smoke box. A very interesting thing that happened with the smoke box is when the locomotive was put there, the funnel with the decaying nature actually fell into the smoke box. So basically, the smoke box is just living on a prayer. But yeah, that's that's what I'm going to be doing, hopefully. So, uh, um, was that it? That was all I need to say. Okay. Well, I guess this has been another uh, botched job of an episode, if I have to be honest. <laughs> I'm sorry for saying that, Lena, but it's a pity that your mic is uh, broken or, you, you know, honestly. So, honestly, yeah. You know, Honestly, it's a lot more of a botch job than part five of my list because I only had a little bit of time to finish it before Christmas Day. Yeah. And uh, now, Andrew, what's uh, going to be next week's uh, all important topic? Next week? Yeah. I actually haven't thought about the next week, but uh, let's. But uh, for now, I guess it'll be a surprise. But then again, this one was a full-on surprise. I didn't tell you guys, you know, what the episode would be about until the last minute. But, uh, like, for next episode, I'm going to tell you guys, I don't know, a day or two before the actual episode. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, then. Would you be interested in uh, joining again? Lena? Lena? 
Oh, yeah, she's definitely up for uh, joining uh, next week. Yeah. Also, um, I thought of uh, an idea of um, making the models for the... Uh, if we were to make the Some Random Five Chime movie, I think that Tom should make some of the custom models, mainly of the you know primary locomotives, since we're doing HO gauge models. Uh, Oh, uh, bad news. She said that uh, next week the mic problems will remain. Mm. God damn it. Well, guys. Uh, new, uh, her new laptop won't be here until March. Oof. But either way, guys. Good. That was this episode. That terribly mm-hmm. disappointing bombshell. It's time to end. Thank you so much for watching. Good night. And we will uh, see you guys in the next episode of Burning Subjects. I'm going to go commit arson on